After the beat stalkers broke up, you went into the clothing business yeah. and made and designed boots. And yeah, the, it was to do. Some of it was to do with the clothes that you would see in London. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get in Scotland. Okay. Right. So I would, you know, and then the beat stalkers went to Germany, and then the hotel, the lady who's running the hotel, I'd, she would be sewing. Mm. You know, I'd I'd already done a couple of little bits of clothes, but okay. I'd watch her sewing, and then I just thought you know, this is what I'm going to do when, if the band breaks up. Um, and then in Germany, they had, they had, there was, trou of course, it was flared trousers. Mm. They had trousers with a centre seam, okay. uh, which meant they, they could open at the front so you could wear them really long oh, wow. without them, you know. <laughs> so I was quite taken by that. So when I went back, we went back to Glasgow, or London, we were, we were based in London by this time, when the, the van was stolen, I just, it just happened almost overnight. I thought, well, I'll, ju I'll just start making clothes. And then I started making these trousers because I knew a lot of bands. And then I started making leather trousers. Um, and then a friend of mine, uh, John, who worked at Kenston Market, just said, you should come to Kenston Market. It would be right up your street because mm. I'd made a lot of stuff for different rock bands. Right. And then I went to Kenston Market and I thought, wow. So I, I only... I think I said, yeah, I'll take it, take a shop unit. And I, th I could make 15 pairs of leather trousers by the opening date. So I just put them, hung them around the, <laughs> hung them around the shop, sold nine pairs. Wow. And I thought, wow, that's hundred pound profit <laughs> the first week, you know? So, and then that carried on as clothes and I opened a, a little factory in Kentish town, mm -hmm. to make, mainly to make jackets and clothes, male and female. Mm. And then. Who were your most prominent clients? Uh, uh, apart from Bowie, oh. Santana, oh, okay. The Stones, Iron Maiden, uh, kind of, kind of everybody came wow. in. Kind of the market was where all the bands came. Apart from you know tourists, mm. um, there's a there's a double gated Santana album. They're on a couch. Yes, I know that one. They've all got my the boots. One. They've oh, all got my boots on. I have to go look yeah, at that and, yeah, and of course, Queen. You know, but I really did sell boots to virtually Alex Harvey, but everybody would, you know, kind of, we'd, we sold a lot of boots. So I don't like to brag, but it, got, it went into it, it sort of thousands in the end. Wow. And, and of course, yeah, it was Freddie who, you know, I don't know how much you know of that, but obviously Freddie Mercury was working for me. Yeah, right, he did, yeah. He for, was he a good boot salesman or no? Yes, he was. Oh, he was, he did yeah. sell, he did move product. And I told, <laughs> eh? He moved product. He could, yeah, yeah. Well, there, well, there'd always be a queue each, each Friday and Saturday when we brought the boots over. Right. So he he didn't kind of have to do too much. <laughs> um, but very quiet, very uh, easy going. Never ever checked the money. I had great trust in him. Oh, okay. You know, never once. I had another two shop units, but you just have an inclination to take stock. And <laughs> but with Freddie, I never ever did. All right. Um, and then he. I knew the amount of boot. I had some bags made. I never kept any. They were quite psychedelic. Mm. And I had 10,000 of these bags. And they all went, so I knew the, you know, the sort of output that, without ca doing calculations. And Freddie had said, he went to a party at the weekend. He said, and everybody in the party had your boots on. And he says, everybody. And he said, I don't know if you know Alan, but it's not really cool. You're not cool unless you've got a pair of Alan Mayer boots on. <laughs> <laughs>